is an Unspoiled Network podcast. This is Unspoiled, covering Justified, Season 5, Episode 13, Restitution. In this episode, all my dreams have come true. Daryl got murdered by his sister. Boyd going back to Robin Banks. And Ava out of jail. But now she needs to, like, what? Fuck over Boyd? Yeah, I'm, I'm here for next season already. Welcome to Unspoiled. On this lonely road, trying to make it home. Doing it while my boss is pissed off. You want some? I'm fighting for my soul. God, get at you, boy. You're trying to go far, fall back. I go hard. On this lonely road, trying to make it home. Doing it while my boss is pissed off. You want some? Stitches get stitches. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. When I was like, I don't know how they're going to wrap this up. The answer is they don't quite. They Not do quite. the exact thing that I like. I don't feel like they've quite handled other finales like this. They, the other ones, they've wrapped up so much more tidily. And this one, they managed to like get some of the characters in close enough to the end that it feels like okay we're starting a new thing but not so close to the end that they feel shoehorned in for them to be able to be like oh look you know right it just it felt very well, natural i think this is the first season finale that is setting the stage for the next season mm-hmm. i think every other season finale has been a lot more interested in wrapping up everything wrapping up the story they've been telling right and this one does that but i feel like that's I don't know. Personally, I feel I feel like the the crow stuff is almost secondary to the last fifteen minutes of the episode that set up everything that's coming up. Um. Yeah. It's like I don't know. I I really felt satisfied by the end of this episode in a way that I think is really hard for finales to pull off. Like I don't. I'm sure that I am not alone in this opinion. But I think endings are like the hardest thing, writing wise. Sure. You know, and it's just when somebody does it right, it's just it's like, oh, good, thank you. You know, it doesn't even have to be that they end it the way that I want, but as long as it feels like they were, they were considerate about it instead of just like, well, we need this to be done. So, which is how it not. I'm not even saying just with this show, with every you know, medium, including books and movies, it can feel that way that in the third act, they're like, well, time to wrap this up. So yeah, thank you guys for not doing that. And for it being like really interesting. And, and I'm really excited for next season now. Yeah, I am so excited. We're coming up to next season because it's just a, it's a great season of TV. I don't want to say more because I'll start to say too much, but (laughs) it's a great season of TV. But uh, but we're way ahead of ourselves because we've got a whole episode to talk about here. Yeah. Where, uh, where all sorts of stuff goes down. Um, are we ready to just hop in? Let's do it. All right. So Justified Season 5, Episode 13, Restitution. Written by Fred Golan and Dave Andrin. Directed by Theo Tonin himself, Adam Arkin. Um, they're all named familiar with. They're all coming back next season. We open... At the Marshal headquarters, where Raylan and the other Marshals are cutting Daryl loose, but holding on to Wendy. Right. And Daryl is explosively angry about this, and over Kendall, obviously, specifically. And Wendy is a lot quieter, but in fury. She's fuming. Yep. And she can't decide if she's, you know, more sad or angry or, or what. I am so glad that this went the way it was because it was frustrating as hell to watch her be mad at Raylan. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I get why I get it, but like, it just, when you know what's really happening, it just makes you crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah especially, well, especially such a smart put together character. Like she is for so much of the time that we see her mm-hmm. to have this giant, this this giant like flailing blind spot. Yeah. For yeah. shitty family. And so, yeah, it's it's nice to see her come to terms with that eventually, but it's infuriating to just watch her 
accept it and accept it and accept it. Mm-hmm. And again, mis- misplace the blame so often. Right. Um, Daryl leaves and he's outside in his truck sort of having his little personal emotional moment. And he learns that Tim is going to be shadowing him. Yeah. Yeah, this, okay. First of all, his moment where he tries to face off with Raylan in the precinct. Oh, yeah. I just hate him so much. It's hard to express just how, like, it's just, okay. And then when he goes out and he tries to pull this on Tim, bitch, listen, it just... Yeah, okay, you're a foot taller than Tim. No, look at the two of you. One of you can handle your shit, and the other one lets other people handle his shit. And it's very clear who is who. I love you, oh, Tim. Yeah. BT Dubs. What's up, Tim? <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> yep. He's created, a, like, a, like almost, like, he's stealth created this character <laughs> as the season's gone on. Right. Because he's so, he's so rarely in, that's true of all the little characters here is it almost feels like they've had to just go off on their own outside the script writer's intentions and turn themselves into real characters on this show. Yeah. Agreed. But I, I love every one of them. I love every one of them, even with the limited screen time that they all get. I was uh, thinking, um, I know I ask you this every time, but please, I'm sorry. I forget. Do you read Dresden files? I'm reading along with you guys, actually. Awesome. Okay. I think Rachel would make a fucking awesome Murphy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think that's great casting. Right? Absolutely. She's teeny tiny. She has a cute little button nose and a really sweet face, but she can fucking, like, beat the shit out of you. And she just is not interested in your bullshit. But she's, like, pure of heart. Right. Right? No, I think that's fantastic casting. Yee! I like to do the mental casting for that book, for that series. I was playing that game with uh, Owen the other day and trying to cast... All of Dresden Files from Star Wars characters. And it, <laughs> it, it is the most fun. <laughs> so I'm sorry, is that all of Dresden Files based on actors in Star Wars or based on Star Wars characters? Based on Star Wars characters, um, there's a character later that would be perfect played by Chewbacca. Um, <laughs> there is, I think, R2-D2 is Bob. Yeah. Um, and or or C-3PO is Bob. That's the one I was thinking of. C-3PO's head as a skull in somebody's like, you know, workshop on a spaceship giving snide commentary with a British accent. Um, I can see that. I, I, I feel like Bob is a little too um, or C-3PO is a little too dedicated to like the org chart on things like he's not he's not enough of a. I, I would go off the reservation if only I had the opportunity sort of guy. Okay, that's fair. Um, but yeah, I just like, I, I I love doing stuff like that. And Dresden Files has such an enormous cast of characters. Like we haven't even gotten halfway into the main like core group of people that winds up recurring over and over again at into in the third book. So that's just something. And when I'm watching law enforcement stuff i was suddenly like today watching her get up in boyd's face at the end i was like oh shit she's murphy that's so great so yeah um anyway no. sorry guys if you don't listen to dress and files you really do not care and i'm sorry i apologize but you also really should because it's a super fun show and it's a really cool book series it so really is expand your horizons listen to more unspoiled yay <laughs> Uh, but, but yeah, so uh, in the meantime, though, back in our episode, yeah, Daryl tries to face down Raylan. It doesn't really go well. No. Raylan has a conversation with Wendy about the uh, how her brother is there. Is uh, what is he? He's making a list of things he wants to do, and rescuing your son is not on it, mm-hmm. or something to that effect. And yeah, and then he goes outside and he tries to he tries to needle Tim a little bit, and Tim is just not here for it. There's he he doesn't budge an inch. So oh, Daryl is yeah. that's just like Darryl's a, I just I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just it it it's it's so I get so much more mad about it knowing that he loses Tim later. That he manages to 
do it. Like, I just, I believed in you, Tim. I was rooting for you. And I'm not saying that it's your fault. I'm not. You're a human. But I kind of hoped that you would be more than a human. Mm. I think that's what it is. No, I get that. I get that. Anyway, uh, but, you know, but I think he needs to be as good as he is. And Tim needs to be as good as he is in this scene. Because I think this is where Daryl realizes he is well and truly backed into a corner. Mm-hmm. There, there is a part of his mind that maybe he doesn't even want to acknowledge that is he's okay with Kendall going to jail for 40 years, even if he knows he's going to feel bad about it later, as long as he can get away. And this is where he starts to realize these people are not letting up. Yeah. But he's so oily that we wouldn't have much of an episode if he was just constantly boxed in. Yeah. Got to get out somewhere. It's true. But, yeah. So for the time being, though, Tim is the man. Uh, Boyd, meanwhile, returns to the bar and finds Jimmy duct taped to a chair and Alberto and two of his uh, Mexican mafioso guys uh, with guns drawn, ready and waiting for them. Oh, this bummed me out so bad. And as you were asking about a few episodes ago, those bodies, those bo- no bodies were supposed to be found in Mexico. Mm-hmm. So now they're saying that the bodies of those responsible will be found in the U.S. And poor Jimmy takes a point-blank shot to the chest. I fucking knew he was going to die, and he was so... His acting in this and in the end of the previous episode are so great. It just kills me that he dies. Like, he's such a small character, and yet I was still just like... And the fact that he's like, you know, he tried to escape and warn you. Like, just to the very end, man. I'm sorry, Jimmy. R.I.P. We salute you, Jimmy. Pour him on out, brother. And uh, we go to our credits. We come back, and we come back right into the same scene. Mm-hmm. Where Boyd is, you know, talking for his life, trying to explain that this is Daryl's fault. And Alberto, will he agrees, but only that if Boyd can deliver Daryl, then Boyd gets to die quickly. As right. opposed to very slowly. <laughs> Which, I mean, okay, I'll take what I can get, I guess. I, I guess. I Considering guess. that this guy has a nice long monologue about learning to skin animals later. Yeah, uh, yeah I'll, I'll take it. Thank you. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> so, Boyd, while all this is going on, though, he is a slick motherfucker. Because he pulls his cell phone out of his pocket, and the first thing he does is pull up the address book, delete Raylan's name, and replace it with Daryl's name. So brilliant. So yeah. brilliant. What? <laughs> and so when they pull out his phone and look, he is sending a text message to Daryl, quote unquote, I have what you're looking for. And they go, oh, okay, good. Good job. That was just... Okay, Boyd. I have to remember that in case something ever happens to me and I need to be slick because that is just such a great idea. The only I... thing that could have gone wrong with that is if he wrote back something like, oh, do you mean you found Daryl? And they were like, <laughs> wait, what? You know, like that, that's about it. And that would be pretty, I mean, it's something if they chose to do that in the show, I would be like, well, that makes sense. But the fact that it doesn't happen doesn't feel like contrived at all. So, yeah. yeah, it was just so well done. I loved it. Yeah, it's slick. It's slick. Um, back at the Marshall Station, we go to a holding cell. And Kendall is waiting, hands, you know, with his hands cuffed. Mm-hmm. And Raylan explains to him that he's now being tried as an adult, looking at 40 years to life of hard time. By the way, I'm going to go get you some hot cocoa. This is just so rude. It's it's railing at his shittiest, but it's not for nuts. It's not for not for no reason. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's the main thing is that I can forgive is that while he's being like awful, it just it it, it has to be done. You know, it's not yeah. like. Um, because there are plenty of times where it doesn't have to be done. And Raylan's just being extra the way he is. But yes, yeah, this and it's so 
beautifully played too because as a grown up you can see what he's doing but as a kid mm-hmm. the whole like oh let me get you some cocoa and oh they didn't tell you about this yeah but you know what you're a stone cold badass you'll be fine really making it sound like he is kind of complimenting the kid even though we know he's fucking with him yeah it just like i thought his tone here was just so perfect um just I'm so glad that Wendy got to see this. Thank God. Thank God she like was willing to sit there and watch and listen because yes, <laughs> you know, it could have been that she just was like, no, I'm not having anything to do with this anymore. But the fact that she had enough of an open mind to be like, all right, fine, I'll, I'll come and pay attention. That saved the day pretty much. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And Raylan's going to get back with the cocoa in a second. In the meantime, we go to the prison yard where Ava's friends have all abandoned her thinking that she snitched on Jenny last episode for killing Penny. Mm-hmm. And Ava has a face to face with Gretchen, who's obviously been dogging her all season. Mm-hmm. So she does the only thing that she can think of, which is to stand up on a table in the middle of the yard and announce that she's not a snitch Gretchen ratted out her own girl, and she's a coward who sends other people to do her dirty work for her. That was a smart move. Yeah. That's smart. It's ballsy. Like, when, she, when she gets grabbed, I was like, well, what is that? And then it wasn't until later that I was like, maybe Gretchen snitched on her to get rid of her. But I couldn't think why she'd do that. And then once I realized that everybody thought Ava did it, I'm like, oh, that was really smart. Okay, I get what you were doing. But then the fact that Ava basically like called her out in front of everybody, that totally undermines it. So, yeah, well done. Yeah. Again, it's a smart play and it's, mm-hmm. it's smart, but it's risky as hell. True. But what other choice does she have <laughs> with no protection? Mm-hmm. She is. She could never go toe to toe with Gretchen. Oh my God! Forget it. Forget it. Like Gretchen so. straight up looks like a female bodybuilder. Like she oh, yeah. doesn't. She doesn't exactly have the muscle and everything, but she looks like she could have the muscle, and she most definitely has more muscle than Ava does. So you looked up the actress back when she first showed up this season, and I think she was a female bodybuilder. Oh my God! Really? Oh my God! I'm, yeah, yeah. You looked her up, and I'm almost positive that that's what we found. So, oh yeah, she is – she's intimidating. And, uh, yeah, Ava does the only thing she can, which is make this as public as possible. Uh, let's see. Heather studied with the fabled Groundlings comedic troupe. This doesn't look like her. I think this is the other girl. I'm using the Amazon X-ray thing. I'm oh, pretty no, sure. no, no. Nick, Nikki is the other girl with Ava, the only one who will talk to her anymore. That's what I thought. And, like, the way that – it's only showing her even though she's no longer in the scene here. So the Gretchen lady isn't actually even showing up for some reason. That's weird. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's not her, but, um, well, maybe we'll figure it out a little later. Right. (laughs) So back at the marshal's office in the holding cell, Raylan comes back with Kendall's Coco. And this is where we see Wendy's watching everything through the one way glass. Right. And Kendall takes that cocoa, and his hand is shaking. Oh, bless like, him. Yeah, like the other guy in the hospital scene in The Godfather. Oh, shit, yeah. That's a good... I'm just I'm just happy I can make those references now. Yay! I forgot about there that. Were se- there were several this season. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, he is near tears. He mostly just listens. And... Raylan telling him about the first time that he was forced to kill something. Uh, Arlo made him kill this feral pig that used to belong to one of the neighbors. That's quite a story, man. Yeah. Yeah. And he even, he even gets a little introspective about why he joined the marshal service. Mm-hmm. Cause I always wondered though, if I didn't just join the marshal service to prove something to him about what a badass I was, maybe just to spite him. Which is more introspection than Raylan's shown about a lot of this stuff in a long time. True enough. It's not it's not, not lurking that far below the surface, but all the same. Good for him. Uh, I just want him to keep doing that. Like, keep going down that road. 
Yeah. You know, like just, you know, you would learn more about yourself, buddy. Just go ahead. But yeah. Yeah. Not in this nature. No, true. Uh, and it's it's for a purpose as well. He's you know, he he's doing this to try to raise whatever feelings in Kendall he can because Kendall talks about how Daryl uh, made him kill a gator when he was 11. Mm-hmm. And Raylan is Raylan's fairly vulnerable in this scene. Again, it's not out of nowhere. He's doing it to make a to try to make a point, to try to connect with this kid. But he talks about how after he killed the pig, he he ran to the house and threw up, and that just made his father call him a pussy and beat the tar up. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, of course it did. Of course it did. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and then how the first time that he killed a man, he reacted the same way. How was it when you killed that guy, Kendall? Yeah. And he just sort of stumbles back through the story that he learned to tell. Yeah, it was just, there's no emotional connection with it. You can tell that it's just like, uh, 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 wait, what's the script? What's the script? Yeah, it was well done. Yeah. Just, um, oh, I, I, this is, moments like this remind me of like why Raylan is good at his job other than the fact that he can shoot real fast, you know? Right, right. Uh, yeah, he really can be empathetic or relatable or whatever if he chooses to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Kendall, in the end, he doesn't budge. But it's enough to show Wendy that, yeah, he did not do this. Yeah. But even so, Raylan wants her to wear a wire and she won't do it. I kind of, I like understood why she didn't because she said that he'd be able to smell it on her. But... I don't understand why she felt like that was more true than just recording him with her phone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I, maybe she just felt if, if she was not on her own alone with Daryl, he would be able to tell she had to sort of be on her own and have her guard up in that way that she needs to be Hmm. in order for this to feel true. Okay. Hmm. I'm spitballing, but but yeah, like that's I I understood why she was so scared. Like I got I understood Raylan's frustration, but in in that moment before I knew how it ended, I was kind of on her side. You know, I was okay. like I really wanted her to wear the wire, but I I did sort of think she was being smart because as much as Daryl is scum, he's pretty smart. Not as smart as he thinks, but he is pretty smart. And I kind of agreed with her that he'd be able to tell. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think it makes sense. I was thinking about this the other day. You know, we've talked a couple of times about the many reasons that you and I would be terrible criminals. But if I were a criminal, I would spend all day, every day, wondering who is wearing a wire around me. Right. Because that is such a thing on TV. Yeah. That I... It just, I would have to assume at all times I'm being recorded by somebody. Right. I could never get anything done, ever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's something that I always think about when I'm watching, like, TV shows and and movies and stuff, is how much of the time they just take for granted that they can trust somebody. And you must just get to a point in your life where you figure, either I trust somebody or I can't trust anybody. And if I can't trust anybody, I can't even do my job. So yeah, you have to just like come to terms with that. But it, even as a viewer, I get more paranoid than most people seem <laughs> to be like in the in the actual universe I'm watching. So yeah, I totally totally get that. Yeah. Uh, out on the street, we come back to Tim and Daryl, and this is unfortunately where Tim loses him. Daryl makes a break for it at a red light. He runs through dirt, drives through traffic. Tim tries to pursue and gets T-boned by a pickup truck. Poor that Tim. That was rough. Um, yeah. It yeah. was funny because I watched this episode and then later that day we went out to see Atomic Blonde and there's a part where there's like a really unexpected, horrible Oh, T-bone. yeah. <laughs> and I was yeah. just like, God damn it, I'm getting PTSD from these action sequences in these shows. <laughs> um. And uh, yeah, it's a, it, it's unfortunately that's just Daryl. He's still slick, so fucking Daryl. Mm. 
Agreed. Now, back at the bar, uh, Boyd is, well, once again, talking for his life. And he tries to convince the Alberto's two guys, Manolo and Manuel, to side with Boyd and kill Alberto when he comes back. Because Boyd's going to make them partners in his operation, and he's going to take them to Las Vegas. And wouldn't you like that, guys? Mm-hmm. Have you ever been to Las Vegas? And then Alberto comes back, and it seems like it works until, no, absolutely not. This totally did not work. It's just like, this was so embarrassing to watch. I understand mm-hmm. Boyd needs to just kind of just do whatever he can. I get it. He has to, even as desperate a move as this seems like it is, he has to try. But the fact that he's sitting there with a emissaries from an international cartel, and you think these guys don't live the life way more <laughs> than you do? You think you're bullshit shit kicker operation down here with three fucking people one of whom is now dead is appealing to them what do you think you have to offer other than the the you know six keys sitting right in front of them at this moment nothing that's all you've got and they know that they're not idiots oh uh, it was hard to watch because you knew they were like there was just ugh, guys and the way they fuck with them it's just so mean well, you know, that's just it, because it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like the world's greatest pitch. Like it doesn't seem like something that would sway them. But then when Alberto comes back in and they stand up and they draw their guns and they point them at him, and at least for me, I'm going like, all right, well, hey, I guess it worked. <laughs> and but they they let it go just long enough for Boyd to feel really, really proud of himself and just deliver a big shit eating grin yep. about how good he is. Uh, you just don't know how to talk to people, oh brother. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, brother. So, poor Boyd. Oh, well. He does have, like, a way with talking to people. It's just, that's, he's got nothing to back it up. And sometimes he can pretend he does, but, you know. Yeah, but even, in five, you know, five seasons into this show, we've seen Boyd do some great talking. And this was not it. Right. So I, I was willing to go with the idea that he was able to convince them to switch over like that. But I don't think like I would accept it, but I wouldn't buy it. So uh, you were kind of like almost relieved that they didn't buy it because you were like, oh, good. Yes, that would have been ridiculous. OK, that's cool. yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we then go to Daryl and Wendy and Wendy is freed now and she is out on the street. She calls Daryl and tells her brother that the marshals are bluffing trying Kendall as an adult. It's not actually going to happen. And she's going to file a huge lawsuit. And Daryl is like, well, um, I don't know about that. Right. But Wendy just, she bulldozes through this conversation about how badly she is going to take them to court. And so he just kind of agrees to meet with her for a drink. Cause I don't think he feels like he has much of another choice. It's clearly screwing up everything that he's trying to put together. Yeah. But what can he do? And I think, like, the way that she phrases it is just, I am not leaving here empty-handed, but nothing else we have tried has worked out. So a lawsuit's yes. our best bet to get to get out of here with literally anything, because our lives are fucked now. That's yeah. She is talking his language, because that is what he has been using to keep her there forever. So That's true. good on you, Wendy, for turning that around. Yeah, that is very true. It's very true. So, yeah, and then... After the phone call, Daryl just – they hang up and he looks down at his phone and he's he's thinking hard. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, this is where later on when she is setting him up and recording him, I keep waiting for him to turn the tables because this – when I see that expression, I'm going like, oh, this smells to him. Mm-hmm. But I guess it's just him being – feeling a little like flummoxed, like, well, shit. <laughs> What I was thinking now? the exact same thing because of the expression. I was like, oh, does he know something already? Like, that took no time. But then later it seems like not. So I was like, okay. But yeah, I totally yeah. agree. I had the same impression. Yeah. 
I was really uh, worried that she was going to walk into Audrey's and he was just going to bash her in the head or something. Yes, I kept I keep waiting for that scene to go horribly, horribly wrong. Mm-hmm. But but it never happens. So that's and a plus. The one plus was that I figured that he would think she had a wire, and since she refused to wear it, that he'd like you know pull her shirt open to see the wire, and it wouldn't be there. And so then yeah. he'd be like, "Oh shit, I'm I'm sorry." And then she'd have the upper hand because he'd be feeling guilty, um, which could have that could have played, I I think. But I'm glad that that wasn't yeah. how it went. Well, you know, it, and when she and we're obviously several scenes ahead, but when she gets to the bar, she walks in with her purse and puts it down on the table really specifically. Mm-hmm. And all I can think of is in the Simpsons where they have the, the guy sitting in on like a pyramid scheme and there's a guy in a turban and there's a guy with a briefcase with a giant camera lens sticking out of it. Right. And I, it, it felt to me like the most um, obvious thing in the world, except apparently to him. So, yeah. Yeah. You're right. I, I guess we just have more information as the audience. And so mm-hmm. we, we can think about things a little, a little more, uh, Clearly, three, clearly, I guess. Yeah, I was yeah. three sixty. I guess kind of way I was, what I was trying to say. But yeah. So anyway, back in the Marshalls' headquarters, uh, Rachel's surprised that Raylan cut Wendy loose, but Raylan is too busy looking at his cell phone and seeing all these texts from Boyd Crowder that appear to be going to somebody other than the intended recipient. Right. And Rachel, though, is uh, on her way out to retrieve Tim. He's in the accident. He's fine. He's not seriously injured. And Raylan is left to his own devices to figure this out. This was delightful. I just, I'm so happy with the fact that this actually worked out. I really wasn't yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and this is where we see that it works out because at Johnny's bar, Boyd is here. He's out of time. Mm-hmm. And this is the conversation with Alberto about hunting and how his father taught him to skin and dress a kill. Yo. And he pulls out his 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 you know his toolbox of instruments. Mm-hmm. And all all Boyd can do is just sort of egg him on and just say like, whatever, man, just do it. This was some Ramsey Bolton shit, man. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> kinda. Like this is. Uh... I just, this show is really good at casting. Like, they really are. Because so much of the shit that is in this show, and this monologue is a prime example, could come across as super goofy and really, like, kind of lame. And Mm -hmm. it is scary. He is scary. This is not a man that feels like he's posturing. This is a man who has done this many times. To the point that as he's describing this, there's an almost de- like a detachment to it. Like it's just he doesn't have to he knows that he doesn't have to put effort into it to make it scary because yeah. this is just how it is. And right. I just thought he delivered this like brilliantly. This guy is pretty goddamn good. I think. OK, let me see if this guy is on the X-ray thing. Alberto Ruiz. Okay, no, it's not the same guy. There's a dude um, in Luke Cage that comes in at one point and is... Did you watch that show? I did. He comes in to, like, face off with Cottonmouth at one point and he's eating mini Snickers bars and he's just throwing the (laughs) wrappers on the floor while he's talking to him. Do you remember that scene? Yeah, that's uh, Juice from Sons of Anarchy, isn't it? No, that's shades? no, shades? that's no. shades. No, this dude, it's a, it's the guy who represents the Mexicans. Um, all right, okay, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. And he's like gotcha. five feet tall, maybe, but he's still managing to like stand up to Cottonmouth, like he's fucking just the boss. And it's such again, it's like one of those moments where you're just like, this shouldn't work. Why does this work? It's just because this actor's just really good at this, and that the knife oh i hate it i hate that hooked end i don't want to know what that's for i don't like any of this (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. i totally hear that 
Um, yeah, and, you know, and I'm actually I'm looking up the casting directors for this show. There's mm-hmm. two of them. Neither of them have extensive resumes like of any kind. Yeah, I was noticing that too. Um, Justified seems like it was their thing, and they were both on the Americans after this. I've heard and they've that definitely done. Amazing. I have too. I really want to watch it. And uh, yeah, one of them, Camille Patton, looks like the primary casting director, and she has a a laundry list of credentials, but uh, nothing that's like nothing that's huge. Yeah. So I don't know, but they knocked it out of the park in this episode in this series. No question there. Uh, anyway, yeah, Boyd is egging on Alberto, and Alberto's about to take his his first cut when Boyd's cell phone buzzes with a text message. <laughs> and Alberto reads it as a message from Daryl agreeing to meet. Uh, but he'll only do it at Boyd's woman's place out in the country. Yeah. Um, that This just has worked out so well. I don't know why Raylan would choose that. Do you think that he like got what Boyd was trying to do? I think he, to an extent, I think yes. But maybe not totally. I think Ava's place is supposed to be pretty remote. Right. So I think it was about moving this somewhere where there's not going to be a lot of distractions. Okay. And it's going to give them time to, you know, not not to set stuff up because it really just winds up being Rachel and Tim that are there. Mm-hmm. But I think making a change of venue. Okay. I don't feel like this Audrey's is a great place to have a shootout or to try to conduct any kind of official business with people who do not want to be conducted. Gotcha. Okay. That's fair. So, uh, so yeah, they're, he's happy with that and they got to go move out to Ava's. Uh, speaking of Ava in the prison cafeteria, Ava's talking to Nikki, who again is the only person who will talk to her anymore. And weighing her options, Ava would rather fight just just Gretchen, just fight the one woman instead of the entire population of the prison. And Nikki tells her that Gretchen isn't planning to fight her. Gretchen's planning to kill her. Which I think is, you should, you should know that by now. Am I wrong? Yes. <laughs> no, you're not wrong. But I also, I don't know. Part of me thinks that Ava just, you know, if I, it's kind of like standing up to the bully in the schoolyard, if you can... Give him a bloody nose. He's probably not going to come back at you ever again kind Mm -hmm. of thing. When, like, no, 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 the stakes on this are way, way, way higher than that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Or maybe the audience just needed spelled out for them. I don't know. It just, yeah, like, I think that was the main thing. Is like we've already seen them kill one of her friends just, just solely to get people to not like her. Like, that's how high the stakes are, is that people are dying just to change an opinion on you. So... It should be pretty self-explanatory that this is not a fight. This is life or death. But, I mean, I, it should be self-explanatory to the audience and to her. But, I don't know. I don't know. In any event, that definitely causes Ava some concern. For just a moment, she looks really shaken. But then she kind of sets her jaw and strides across the mess hall and launches into an attack on this random lady talking to Gretchen. Mm Mm-hmm. And And the whole place erupts. I knew what she was doing. I was like, oh, she's trying to get herself put in solitary because that's pretty much the only safe place now. Yep. Yep, exactly right. And the guards eventually do rush in to break everything up. But before then, she winds up in a circle of white supremacists who are not pulling their punches. Yeah, they're not. They're just kicking her and shit. Like, oy. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to say I have never been on the ground being kicked by multiple people, but right. it just seems like the least pleasant thing ever. Ugh. Is that an understatement? I don't know. I feel like that's an understatement. I just but like just... there is something about it when a, when a fight gets to that point that people are kicking you that I feel like you just should just wrap it up. Just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that is somebody who is no longer in a position to continue the fight, and you're choosing yeah. to continue anyway. Yep. Yeah. So, back at Davis' house, uh, Alberto and the other Mexicans and Boyd, who is in handcuffs, are waiting on Daryl's arrival. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately for them, a car pulls up, and it's just Rachel and Tim. 
And there is a very brief standoff. And Alberto eventually comes out. So it's all three of them on the porch with Rachel and Tim at the car. Right. And then we get our first honest to goodness shootout in like a long time. That's true. Huh? I never thought about it, but yeah, you're right. For a show with this many guns, there isn't really like an honest to God gunfight very often, especially not one that's more than one on one. And it's it's pretty cool. <laughs> they really yeah. do a good job with it. And Rachel and Tim get to be badasses. I mean, this the fact that they are willing to do this to just like pull on two federal agents. They must yeah. really know that they're safe in what they do. Yes. And they, um, Rachel and Tim, they clearly have assessed the situation very quickly mm -hmm. because there are plenty of people, I think, who would try to to talk their way through this. And one of the guys says, you know, actually, I think it's Alberto says, we have a boss just like you. The difference is we show up empty handed. Our boss will kill us. Right. So because you're outgunned and outnumbered, I'm giving you one chance to get in that car and drive away. And Tim just doesn't even miss a beat and says, you have three seconds before we kill every one of you. Oh, Tim, why are you so hot? <laughs> I swear to God. I was talking about this with Maggie in the uh, Twin Peaks podcast because there's a moment where there's a uh, federal agent, Cole, who's talking to somebody. And it's a woman that he's like on a date with. And he says, I told him that he better put his hands up right now or I would ventilate him. And she says, what mm. happened? And he said, it was a small but tasteful funeral. <laughs> and I said to Maggie, I'm like, I really judge myself for what a turn on that is. Like that shouldn't be something. It feels so like Neanderthalish for me to be like, Oh, what's up? You murdered a guy. Like that's not, that's not okay, Natasha. But I can't help it. That's completely how I react. Like, not in just, you know, if there's some guy who's like, oh, I pounded his face and because fuck that guy. That's different. That's not the same thing. It's this kind of like, you know, like I was saying earlier with uh, Murphy, being pure of heart and mm -hmm. and standing for what's right without bending. That's the thing where you're just like, hey, cool. oh, what's up? Being cool in the face of danger and taking taking care of business. Yeah, you know, it's just like. I get that. It's, it's something that I I really don't like that it works on me, but it very much does. <laughs> so, yeah, gunfire erupts. Uh, Alberto, surprisingly, is not the last one to go down. I like the show that the show did that. Um, but one guy at one point breaks through the window of the house. Mm -hmm. And with only one Mexican left standing, he rushes back into the house and it wildly starts firing at where Boyd used to be before the gunfire oh started. God. That was so funny. Yeah. Only to find out that Boyd has scrambled across the room with his hands tied behind his back, picked up the gun and manages to shoot the guy dead. Yo. Boyd is a tricksy motherfucker. He is. He's like a little he weasel. Something. Cockroach. <laughs> Cockroach is appropriate. Right? I feel like it sounds like it makes me hate him when I say cockroach, but like, I mean, what creature survives the kinds of things that Boyd has survived? He has no right to be alive. How dare yeah. he? You know? like, <laughs> um, Yeah. And then when Rachel and Tim rush in and they, you know, they boy, tell Boyd to drop the weapon and, just, and he's very cool and very collected and just, I would raise my hands if I could. <laughs> And he is, he's very impressed with himself throughout this scene and the next scene. He is, uh, he thinks everybody should be applauding him for his quick thinking heroics. Oh my God. He's so insufferable. Like they don't <laughs> know what you did. They're not idiots, yeah. dude. Have some respect for them at the very least. Yeah. And Rachel and Tim are not quite so ready to, you know, throw roses at his feet because as far as they're concerned, they were used by Boyd to save his own ass and essentially led him to an ambush. Right. Duh, Boyd. Mm -hmm. And, and Rachel gets the last word in this scene 
She tells Boyd she's going to go get Raylan's Boyd Crowder file and make it her sole purpose on this earth to ensure that Boyd receives every ounce of punishment he has coming his way and then some. Yeah, that Gosh. is great. <laughs> is that not great? It is, and I love, at the end of the day, that it is Rachel who kickstarts this investigation on Boyd. Mm-hmm. As opposed to Raylan, who has been dogging him for five seasons, and Art, who, as much as I love him, just didn't care about this two-bit nothing. Yeah. But Rachel is not putting up with it. I like that this is what sets Rachel off, too, because there's been so much bullshit with Boyd at the center of it forever. And yeah. it's not until she realizes that he is literally using the police to get himself out of the shit he has pulled that she's like, oh, no, you know what? Fuck this. Like, there's something about that that feels so true that it's like, you know, criminals are going to be criminals. And to a degree, I expect that. And I'm not prioritizing him because there are a bunch of criminals out there. But most criminals don't call the police to help save their own asses and mm -hmm. m basically murder a bunch of randoms. Like that is just, that's crossed a line for her that he cannot take back. Yeah. I think that's, I think that makes sense for her, you know, completely, completely. Now we go to solitary confinement where Ava is visited by nurse Rowena who is surprisingly sympathetic in this scene. Yeah. And Ava's shoulder got dislocated again in the fight and Rowena pops it back into place. Mm -hmm. And Ava is says, you know, well, at least I'm safe here. And Rowena says, you know, either you need to spend the next five years in solitary or you need to be prepared to fight every day till they let you out. Mm -hmm. Which is that is not a way to live. No, not at all. Neither one of those is really a good option. Because that means, like, but, I'm just thinking about the way that this prison is set up where there seems to be, like, no security a lot of the times. And you could just have, you could just not sleep. You'd have to have, like, somebody standing guard by your bed to in shifts every night while you fucking slept. Yeah. You know, just like, ugh, that sounds like a fucking nightmare. Right, and that's that's how it is. And either you wind up dead, or you wind up like hopelessly traumatized and just accepting of the you know mm -hmm. the, or you have you do have to align yourself with somebody like, uh, the group that Ava just went on get it just got let in with and be used as, you know, a sex object or whatever, mm -hmm. or whatever means they have. I mean that's that's what happens to people, or at right. least what they're afraid of. So, yeah, she's she's in the shit right now. And, you know, there, she doesn't really. Uh, well, I'm curious exactly what would have happened if this had kept going, but we don't ever really find that out. That's my main question is just what would she have done? And uh, yeah. I don't I really don't know. Yeah. Um, I think she would have wound up dead. I think that she's a strong enough character where I don't think she could have hidden forever. Um, I think, he, I think you're right. Yeah, I think, you're I right. think she, she, I think she would have gone out in a, a blaze of glory in some way. I don't think she would have been shivved in a bathroom with nobody else around. I think she would have tried to do what she did in the mess hall mm -hmm. or, and wound up, yeah, wound up on the wrong side of a steak knife or something. Ew. Yeah, I think you're right. And it's so basically Raylan saved her life. Pretty much. Wow. Pretty much. It's how she winds up in the situation she's in. I uh, at the end of sorry, this. Ava, because nobody likes to be beholden to some to their ex boyfriend for fuck's of all sake. People. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Sucks. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime though, before we get there, we have our big Wendy and Daryl scene. So Wendy meets up with Daryl at Audrey's. She does not want to drink. She confronts Daryl about Kendall and about who really shot Art. And she tells him she knows that Kendall's taken a rap, even if he won't be tried as an adult. And she says, I know my son. And Daryl says that, no, you're a deadbeat mom. 
And they here are all the things that I did for him that you weren't here for. Um, which is a little bit of a fair point, except that Daryl's a total shitbag and was probably a terrible surrogate father. So... I really like that was the thing, right? Because he's like, oh, really? You know him? Where did I take him for his 10th birthday? What did I give him that he wanted more than anything else in the world? And I really want to know if that's even true, because she wouldn't know if it wasn't true. So that's a really good point. For all we know, he forgot his fucking 10th birthday, you know, like. I don't know. I wouldn't put it past him at all to just fucking make a ton of shit up. Yeah, that's a really good point. <laughs> but they go through this sort of long winding conversation and it comes down to her apologizing to him and how she knows Daryl is doing it all for the family. And she eventually gets him to admit that he was the guy who pulled the trigger and then he pinned it on Kendall since Kendall was a minor and it was a mistake. It wasn't supposed to happen this way. And it was just him doing his best. Mm -hmm. And then after he confesses, she reveals to him that she's been recording everything. Dumbest thing ever. Yeah. Dumb as and, fuck. And I get it that you want to be there to see his face, but control yourself. I right? get it, but fucking have some restraint. Jesus Christ. You know, he killed your brother. You know that he isn't above killing family and he is about to let your son go to prison for 40 years. What do you think he isn't capable of? This was so stupid. I hated that. Wendy is yeah, not that and, dumb. I just had a really hard time buying this. And, and I'll be 100% honest. I think that this is a – I think it's a really underwhelming resolution to the Crow family drama this season. Okay. I, I really do. I love the end of this season. I just think that they – I think I don't think they stick the landing on this particular plot. Now, here's the thing. I would agree with you, except for the fact that she has that gun on his balls. So yes. <laughs> while I am mad at her for telling him, on the other hand, I feel like she wanted this confrontation because she knew she was armed and he wasn't. And so she was like, oh, go on, bring it, because I've been – now that I know who you are, I would love an excuse to shoot you in the balls. So, and the fact that she does it, she, she shoots him twice. She does. Makes me really be like, okay, you wanted this confrontation and you were prepared to actually follow through with it. So, okay. I, it really irritated me at first when she tells him, because I was like, what? But when she says, how are you going to do it without any balls? And then you see the gun. I was just like, Oh, shit. Like, it's kind of silly because if you're prepared to shoot him, then why did you need this con confession? Because that's it's not going to matter. But I do get like on a visceral level, if you got played by him the way that she did, how mm -hmm. enraged you would be. So I get what you mean. I'm OK with it personally, but I understand why you wouldn't like it. Yeah, I just it's not even that I did I hated it or anything. I just like I said, I felt like it was underwhelming. Um, but I am glad that it winds up being Wendy who takes down Daryl, and and he gets what he deserves. God knows that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah. In summary, Daryl advances on her. She pulls the gun. I love that Raylan shows up and does almost nothing just to watch this play out. Yeah, and. Yeah, and Daryl says, you know, she's got a gun. And he says, yes, but he doesn't want to have to shoot Daryl's sister or get involved in any of their family matters. He's, and, such, he's such a shit. I love you, yeah. Oh my god, he's such a shit. Well, and then after, she shoots him in the balls, shoots him in the throat. Yeah. And then as, as he's dying, he gets Wendy to drop her weapon. But then as he's dying, kneels over him and says... Didn't I tell you you were going to wish I killed you? Well, don't you? I just wanted him to say punk at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you? Punk? Yeah, I, I just, I really enjoy his lack of concern for this guy. Yeah, same. You know, he's just like, I mean, it's just... <sighs> Even when he walks in and he says, oh, am I interrupting something? 
it's he is basically like letting her know, hey, I'm here if you need me. But if you're going to go ahead and shoot this guy like you do that is really yeah. what it feels like. You know, I'm your backup, but sure, go ahead. Yeah. And he does go, you know, when he's sitting there at the bar and his hands are empty. And then when she fires that gun the first time, they racks focus to him and his gun is in his hand pointed directly at the both of them. Just in case. Yep. And I just, re- I, I, again, I love that, that gunslinger edge. <laughs> gunslinger. Yeah. That. Yeah. So that's, and that's it for, uh, for Daryl Crow. And really that's it for Wendy and for Kendall too. We don't see them again. Um, yeah, that's true. I would have liked to see her break the news to him that, yeah, you know, because they're yeah, getting and, to go home and be free of this bullshit finally. Right. And that kind of bugs me too. I am I know that the end of Daryl was the end of the, you know, the drama of that plot line. Mm-hmm. But the tiny bit of wrap up that we get doesn't feel like quite enough, especially on this rewatch where I've really come to appreciate those two characters. Mm-hmm. I I wish they got one last scene this season. Yeah, I agree. That's true. I was feeling very, very satisfied with this episode. But there is a part of me that like kind of expected to see something wrapping up with them. Still, even though I know this is the finale, and we probably won't see them again. It's I still had it kind of in my head that we would hear something else. And I'm realizing that that's probably not true. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. And you know, and that's part of this season as much as I've enjoyed this rewatch of it a lot more. This season has a lot of people who just seem to enter and exit. We don't get a scene of Allison again. That's we don't true. get a scene. We don't get a scene of the um, the the rich guy's hot wife. Mm-hmm. You know, she she exited back in season four and waiting for her to come back, and she doesn't show back up. Yeah, I really thought that she was going to be behind the thing with Ava. I, really, yeah. I was like waiting for something. Yeah. Me too. Me too, and. I feel like there's a lot of characters that they set up and don't, and then just sort of let them drift away. Mm-hmm. That's true. So, um, but all in all, like I said, I like this a lot more, so I, um, I can let it go. Now, back at, uh, we go right from there to the hospital where Art is awake and he is enjoying his morphine drip. And, <laughs> they're talking party time. Yeah. Very much the yeah. He's a lot less cranky in here than he would be at home. Right. Well, you should just get a morphine drip for the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rachel and Tim are there with uh, Leslie Arch wife and Rachel and Tim make a uh make a quiet exit. So Raylan and Rachel, sorry, Raylan and uh and Art can talk a little bit. Mm-hmm. And Art's question to him is did you come to say goodbye? And Raylan has no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, he's like, uh, I don't think you're that bad off. I think you're gonna be okay. He's like, <laughs> what? No, not me. But yeah, it turns out after Raylan requested a transfer, Art looked into it, and his old boss down in Florida has a spot for him. So the request is underway. Yeah, I um had forgotten all about this. Mm. And I really enjoy that Art is not budging and isn't like, oh, yeah, the guy who killed me is dead now, thanks to you, probably, kind of. Not really, but, like, it could be said that it was thanks to him. And that's not a free pass out of the doghouse at all. Yeah. And after Leslie leaves so the two of them can talk, Art says it was Daryl Crow, wasn't it? And Raylan says, yeah. And his next question is, did you kill him? And thankfully, Raylan's able to say, no, but he's dead. But he's dead. Yeah. And uh, Raylan seems like he wants to talk about a whole lot more, but then he kind of stops himself and just says, get some rest. I'll see you again before I go. Ah, bless. Yeah. So so they're not... They're not hunky dory. Nope. Which I also appreciate. Same. This did not make it all better. Yeah, agreed. I mean, 
it's just that's like Raylan is yeah he's just not willing he's willing to do like the legwork when it comes to a really simple get bad guy but he's not do, willing to do the legwork when it comes to like think about my own actions so mm-hmm. yeah yeah or any kind of, or establishing any kind of you know trust or or emotional um emotional bond or anything like that that's not something that he has he has enough ram in his head for yeah Uh, that's a good way to say that he needs to clear out his mind palace a little bit (laughs) a little well you know that honestly that's that's my term for myself when i get to a topic that i know i should care a lot about and i just can't make myself do it Mm -hmm. this is I don't have enough RAM in my head to have an opinion on this. I've got all of these other things that I care about a lot. I can't add one more to my plate right now. And I kind of feel that way about Raylan. He's filled his head he's, you know, with all these other things that he can't put another one of them aside to focus on mm-hmm. the emotional part of being a human being, I guess. Yeah, fair. So we go back to the Marshall Station, and Raylan is, uh, I guess, I don't know that Skyping... Exactly, but he's uh, he's webcamming with Winona and his daughter. Yeah, this was weird because I keep forgetting about her. Yeah, like, and I know I think, that's I think kind he of does the point. too. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the point is to just be like, hey guys, remember the woman that he impregnated? Like, this is should be a huge thing and it's like never part of his story and isn't that fucked up so i think that they're doing a good job with that but it's just it really is jarring to like see her and for him to be factoring them into where he goes just seems unnatural i really don't see him going like well as we find out that isn't what's going to happen probably but if it is it's not until after this coming season's over I do love that he breaks the news to them right before the scene starts. And he says, yeah, he'll be all moved in in a couple of weeks. And Winona breaks down in tears. And she says to the, the she says, did you hear that, sweetie? Daddy's coming home so mama can finally take a nap. I love that. Oh, God, I can't imagine being a mom. Forget it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, Amanda and I want kids, but I'm going to be like up near 40 by the time that happens. And that's a scary thing. I don't know. I'm going to have that kind of energy, man. I do, um, I do these online uh, writing sessions with a friend who has kids. Um, and we're on camera together, like just kind of keeping each other mm-hmm. company while we write and keeping each other accountable to make time to write. And it's summertime. So her kids are at home and I have to put her on mute all the time. Because the screaming and crashing and throwing of things and just general anarchy happening. And this is not because she's like a bad mother. This is just because children are children. Oh, my God. It stresses me the fuck out. Like, I can't imagine living with that. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. But then I do like, you know, the the other side of that coin is... After, you know, that little moment before the scene ends, he just stares back and looks at him and says, God, you're beautiful. Well, he says, God, she's beautiful to the baby <laughs> she's daughter. Beautiful. Yeah. That, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's what I mean to the, to the baby daughter. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And that to me, yeah, that's the other side of it. That's why, that's why we're still, we're still working on it. <laughs> I mean, I get uh, you. It's just like it, it kind of annoys me with him because it's like, oh yeah, she's so beautiful from like across the country where you never oh have I know to deal with it. Like he just ugh. I know Raylan just <laughs> makes me mad. What are you gonna do? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we go into Rachel's office and Raylan's having a meeting with Rachel and Vasquez, and they're telling him that this is not the right time for him to go. And Raylan wants none of it. And they're naming off all of this stuff. When Duffy, Catherine Hale, who, by the way, had my boss murdered to derail her husband's trial. Robert Quarles, bodies in Mexico, narcotics trafficking, the crows. And Raylan's saying, these are all closed cases. Why are we talking about this? Mm -hmm. And we do also learn, incidentally, that the report on the crows was filed, including the fact that Wendy Crow acted in self-defense. 
So that's our little epilogue. Yeah, I um, forgot about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, which, that's... I mean, he's acting. He's like acting shady. Like, he's like, yep, that's exactly what happened. And I'm kind of like, yeah, but that is what happened, though. Like, he was clearly going to fuck her up. You know? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. There was something about the way that he's, like, treating it that he's acting like, oh, just between us, we're going to say this happened, right? And I'm like, yeah, but that pretty much is what happened. But, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, but they then sort of have to spell out for him. Not that I blame him, not that I blame Raylan for not catching this, but they then lay it out for him that there's a common thread that runs through all of these things. Mm -hmm. And it is Boyd Crowder. And finally they are going after him directly and they want him in prison for 50 years minimum. And Raylan looks like it's Christmas. Yep. you want me to help you get him? It's so funny. Why didn't just, you say so? Well, I been trying to tell you guys. And of course, <laughs> you just come around now, right when I'm about to leave. Sure. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And so, uh, so railing it down for one last case. Then we go to Boyd. And he's at Ava's house, repairing the front window that got blown in. And he gets a call from Ava's lawyer, the wild man. And surprise, Ava's being released. Which Boyd cannot wrap his brain around. And the lawyer has to explain to him that, yeah, the case fell apart. Ava's old cellmate uh, changed her story about what happened with her and the prison guard. And then the prison guard himself recanted the statement. So Ava gets to go home. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, and they have a little bit of really awkward conversation. Listen, and, I do have a question, though. What yeah. did they do to get this guy to recant his statement? Because that's a, wouldn't he, like, lose his job if he was like, hey, I lied. I framed her. I that's did it a myself. really good question. I just, like, that's a really he got good. put in a chair with a gun to his head and he didn't take back his statement. She was still in there. So I just can't imagine what they said or did to get him to, like, come clean. Because that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But. I, I don't know. <laughs> you're you're right. right. I'm not sure. I wonder, I wonder to what extent they're able to manipulate the facts when they are releasing somebody with the intention of them being a confidential informant. Yeah, I guess that's true. Maybe he never recanted and they're only saying that. To Boyd, that might not be what yeah. happened. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know to what extent they can do that to just a lawyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just you know, but yeah, it's a good question though. So Boyd and Ava agree to meet that night when she gets in, and she gets dropped off by the lawyer, and uh, they also they have more awkward conversation. And Boyd kind of says, you know, I, I had some business to attend to this evening. But, you know, come in, I'll make you something to eat. And she says, no, you you keep your appointment. And Boyd eventually just sort of comes out with it and says, what happens now, Ava? Where do we go from here? Yeah. And her only response is, I take a bath, put on my pajamas, and go to sleep. And she leaves. <laughs> or she walks in the house and closes the door. Yeah, I felt bad about this. Like, I think it's a weird kind of mixed thing because on the one hand, it's sort of, it's sort of smart of Ava in a way, if she's going to be informing on Boyd to not come back arms wide open, ready mm -hmm. to just pick up like nothing happened because I feel like that would make him really suspicious. Yeah. Um, but also I don't know. I just, I feel like they, they do really need to talk, but yeah, she's just got home from fucking prison. So she gets to take a bath and just chill by herself. Yeah. It's, I mean, not that that's what she's actually doing. But, you know, just thinking about it. It's just, I just can't yeah. imagine the mindset that you'd have to be in after being in jail for a few months to come home. Yeah. 
and not just in jail, sitting in your cell. It's in jail, dodging white supremacists, right. getting no, no help from the people that you have come to depend on, murdering somebody in a you know in a church, watching the only other person who's been nice to you get murdered in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it really is. That's a lot to process. Yeah, it's a. Uh... Reminds me of that Onion article headline, um, living in environment of constant fear and violence fails to rehabilitate man. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Sometimes they just nail it, man. <laughs> um, so let me ask you about this scene, though. Before you got to the final scene of the episode and sort of learned the other half of this, what did you think about this, finding out that Ava's getting out and then this this reunion? Oh, I 100% figured that he, they did that for her. You did? Okay. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, I, it, it was just so, oh, really? We're going to work on getting Boyd out. Uh, okay, cool. We'll get Boyd. Uh, hey, honey, I just got let out of jail. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. Cause I I did not. Okay. I was yeah. I I was really, again when we when I was watching this for the first time, I think I was so lukewarm on the season as a whole. Mm-hmm. I was just like, all right, this doesn't really make sense. But I guess her story's over in prison, so whatever. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't think I was paying enough attention to that. I don't think I was giving it that level of credit. By this point, because I was so disappointed in this season. I think that's um, fair. Okay. But yeah, I was, uh, I liked it a lot this time. And I was just curious before, cause until when you're missing that piece of information and you didn't connect this scene to the prior scene, then yeah, I just, I think it's a, like you just said, it's a really weird, awkward sort of a reunion that comes out of nowhere. Like, yeah. But in addition, neither Boyd nor Ava has had any time to digest the fact that she is getting out and they're coming back into each other's lives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, uh, okay. okay. We follow Boyd out and we see what his business is, and that is to meet with Wynn Duffy and Catherine Hale in the RV. Yeah, this is the best. Yeah. I love Why? this because I, it, I'm i just really glad that they're like, hey, yeah, you're bad at that. And <laughs> we don't want it ever to be the thing you do anymore because you're so bad at it. But also you're not <laughs> entirely talentless. And I mean, how much fun will a heist show be for the final season? <laughs> uh, Yeah. Sign me the fuck up. Yeah, back to basics. All, I'm in love. Let's do it. Yep. Yep. It's a great bit of stage setting. And I was so happy to see Catherine Hale still on the show because they introduced her and she was super cool. And then she did nothing. And then she disappeared again. Right. And so to see like, no, 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 she's still here. <laughs> and she is still like vaguely amazing. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. So they are they, they they figure out that Boyd's a terrible heroin dealer, but apparently a pretty good bank robber, and they are going back into business. Yeah, that was I'm just excited to have a lady kind of in charge of things, and I love the fact that Boyd's like, well, I he because Duffy's like, when she was running things, it was all smooth sailing. He's like, you mean when her husband was running things, and she just smiles at him, and all of a sudden he realizes. <laughs> That is great. Yes. That is just, that is gold right there. The look, she doesn't look irritated because that's exactly what she wanted everyone to think. So the fact that he fell for it, it just delights her. It doesn't offend her. She's like, ha, ah, you dupe. You fell for <laughs> it. I just love it. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And then we get our final scene, which was the, the sort of the missing puzzle piece for those of us who weren't paying attention. On the Harlan Crime Bridge, where Raylan and Ava meet in private, because it turns out Ava's case didn't just fall apart. Mm-hmm. Raylan and Rachel set things up to get Ava sprung from prison on the condition she's going to cooperate with them and build a case against Boyd. Mm-hmm. 
And as we said at the start of the show, her ex-boyfriend is her contact, which is like the worst idea in the world. But apparently that's what they worked out. Yeah. Yeah, it is the worst idea in the world. I just can only imagine, like, what do you think when you're a criminal and your girlfriend's ex is a cop and you catch her calling and texting him at all hours of the night? Do you think that she's cheating with her ex? Or do you think that she's informing on you? What's the first thing that you think? Mm. I would probably assume she was cheating because I couldn't imagine that she would inform on me. Yeah, I think I would feel the same way. Right? I think I would feel the same way. I would have to go for that first. Because informing just feels like so much more of a betrayal. Like, yes, you know, that's serious life changing shit. Hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they, Ava and Raylan, they lay out, they basically, they lay out their relationship for season six. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Ava tells him, I'm scared. And Raylan says, don't be. And they part. And the Ruby Friedman Orchestra reminds us that you'll never leave Harlan alive. Yo, this is my favorite version of the song so far. Isn't it so fucking good? So good. Holy shit. Like, it started and... I was paying attention to the show, but, you know, I still pick my phone up here and there and like my head snapped up and I was like, what is this? And then the second time I watched the episode, I still got goosebumps all over my body. Like I was just like, oh, my God. It's what is it? What is their name? It's the Ruby Friedman Orchestra. Ruby Friedman. Okay, I'm looking that up right now. Yeah, there's actually there's a quote from Graham Yost who, you know, created the show about this song. And he says, I had uh, I had as a goal from early on using a female cover for the song when a season would end with a dilemma for Ava. It really is the question. We know it's going to come down to Raylan and Boyd, but what's going to happen to Ava? And will she survive the story or will she be killed? It felt almost like more than any other time we've used it that it was appropriate. The singer is Ruby Friedman, and we heard that version three years ago at the end of season two. But we went with the Brad Paisley version. And then Dave Alvin last year. So it was time for Ruby. And it was actually written into the script that Ava walks back to the car and Ruby Friedman's version kicks in. Hmm. So they held on to that for exactly the right moment. That's uh, because I was thinking, too, about in terms of what, what happens to Ava. She got out of jail, but that chick's brother is still out there and he got put in the ICU by Boyd. And Ava escaped his sister. So both of them could potentially be targets. I don't know how much of a lesson he's learned because he could kind of maybe have realized, hey, I don't want to fuck with Boyd because look what happened to me. Or he could hear through the grapevine, all the guys that Boyd used to beat me up are fucking dead. And Boyd's just sitting there wide open. It's true. I don't know if that's going to come back up again, but... I would not be surprised if it did. I'm not sure I want it to because I kind of just don't want to deal with them anymore. So I'm hoping (laughs) it doesn't, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked, I guess. Oh, we will find out. Yeah. We will find out as we move into season six of six next week. Dun, dun, dun. That's crazy town. Can't believe it's the last season. I know. Man. And there's 12? 13. 13. I know I do this all the time, guys. Sorry. Yes, you do. (laughs) Forgive me. (laughs) So 13 Um, episodes. Oh, boy. So that's about three months. Yep. Just over. So we'll be done by the end of 2017. Man. There's going to be a lot of changes coming up next year. I'm going to be like, because of the way the timing works out, like I'm going to be finishing up... um, what do you call it? I'll be finishing this. I'll be wrapping up on leftovers and starting Westworld with Rashawn. Mm. Um, and I'll be coming to the end of uh, Twin Peaks and have to start. Probably I'll start a Harry Potter centric patrons only thing then. Um, there's just going to be it, it's kind of weird how it happens with the show because I'm doing five, seven I'm doing eight shows a week usually 
And even though there are so many different things happening and some are books and some are movies or TV shows or whatever, a lot of times they'll sync up in ways where I'll be on the finale episode of a certain season at the same time as another show, or I'll be in the final chapters of a book at the same time as another book, or there'll be a really key plot point set in a meatpacking district in one book. And it's also a meatpacking district in this show that I'm watching. Like, I don't know why that is, but it happens a lot. Um, so yeah, that like coming up to when we're finishing this up, there's going to be a few other things that are starting to wrap up too. And it's just going to be a lot of changes out there, man. Um, but anyway, well, thank you, sir, for being here this evening. I appreciate it. Um, Absolutely. Thank you. And new patrons, I just want to say hi to you. What's up? Um, we have Lauren Vogt. Vogt? Vogt? Hope I'm saying these right. I'm sorry. Um, Devin, Brandy, Beth, and Samantha all became patrons this week. So welcome to all of you guys. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Thank you. Um, if you're $5 and up, you'll get access to Twin Peaks. If you're $10 and up, you'll be getting a postcard in the mail from me. I already uh, sent out the postcards for july earlier this week alan you're going to be getting one also yay um, and the ones that are going to be coming up for august i'm ordering and they are uh a a black background with a white fawn and it says snape was still a dick though um truth so that Hashtag is going truth. to be the august postcard so i'm excited about that um yeah. So become a patron. Patreon.com slash unspoiled. Um, you can also support the show by shopping on Amazon at unspoiledpodcast.com slash Amazon. Or you can support the show by leaving a review on iTunes, which I actually haven't checked to see if we have a new review on iTunes. But that's something that's like really, really important to building an audience. Um, it's something that I think a lot of people overlook because they assume everybody else who's listening is doing it. If you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of uh, my really unfortunate. Uh, what do you call it? Bachelorette party where all of my friends went home at like nine 30 because they all assumed that everybody else was going to stay out and party with me. And none of them. Oh did. no. Yeah. That was the worst. Oh. Um, so Guys, don't assume other people are doing it because I can pretty much guarantee you that they're probably not doing it. And it's up to you. You need to do it. And it's free. And all you need to do is download iTunes if you don't have it and make an account. And you don't even need to use a credit card now to make an account. They used to make you do that, which was dumb. But now they've learned their lesson. And just type it up in like two seconds. And the more of those we get, the more people find the show because it's an algorithm based solely on the number of reviews. It's not even how many stars we have. Like we could have, you know, 3000 one star reviews and we'd still show up at the top of the list as long as it was 3000. Um, so yeah, y'all leave some reviews and let us know that you love us because we love you. And, and we, we just want to know somebody's out there listening. We just want to know somebody cares. Um, and yeah, you know where else to find us. Facebook.com slash unspoiled pod. Twitter at Unspoiled Show, Instagram at Unspoiled Podcast. Sir, take it away. Where are you at? All right. You guys can find me on Twitter at Al Kingsley. Uh, you can find me here for the next 13 weeks recording Justified. And shortly, you can find me on the Unspoiled Book Club because we are talking about the girl with all the gifts uh, recording this week, hopefully dropping shortly after that. Right, right. I forgot about that, like... Because I'm not doing them live anymore, and they're just, you know, another, like, Skype recording, they're not, mm. like, in the forefront of my mind that, oh, yeah, I have to be ready for that. Because it takes more prep work and stuff to do things live, you know? So, sure. But, yeah, I've been really enjoying that book. So, yeah. It's wonderful. I just finished rereading it. It's great. Check it out if you haven't. Yeah, guys, if, seriously, it's, like, a, it's it's sad in some ways, but it's also really imaginative and uh, just a very 
interesting take on something that's been you would think had, has been done to death that there really isn't much new you can do with it and you'd be wrong um and yeah and i'm and i'm gonna tell you as i told you you know if you haven't heard of the book before don't look up anything about it go into it blind it's the best way to experience the book mm-hmm. agreed because i went into it not knowing anything and it was really interesting that way yeah um and you can find the book on amazon by going to unspoiledpodcast.com slash amazon <laughs> ding all right everybody thanks again for listening thank you alan for being here and thanks, we will everyone. see you next week with a new episode the premiere right. of the final season holy shit hell yeah toodaloo motherfuckers That was an Unspoiled Network podcast.